So according to Forbes this year, Jimmy Buffett, at 76 years old, is now worth a billion dollars. How does a kid who started out as a simple Catholic altar boy, whose goal in life was to play bass in a band so he could meet chicks, end up a billionaire? Well, I guess if there was really an easy answer, most all of us would be billionaires. I started working on this video a few months ago by rereading some of Jimmy's books I had bought over the years. But now I sit here reading that he had just passed away. I'm not going to change the video or how I intended for it to be. So this is just a quick look back on the story of a guy who loved music, worked hard, had lady luck on his side, made a ton of money, and made millions and millions of people happy on his journey through life. He was born James William Buffett on Christmas Day in 1946 in Pascagoula, Mississippi. He was raised Catholic and attended St. Ignatius grade school and graduated from McGill Institute for Boys, a Catholic high school in Mobile. It's true, Jimmy was an altar boy during these years growing up. Friends remember him as a happy-go-lucky type guy who enjoyed sailing, which he learned some from his grandfather, and of course, he liked music, which at that time he couldn't have imagined in his wildest dreams where it would take him, or could he? Jimmy was a dreamer, but it took more than that. Here's what he says helped him along the way. Out of all the people out there trying to make it in music, somehow I slipped through the cracks. I was instilled with great work ethics by my parents, and I had a little bit of talent and a lot of luck. You can't do it with one or two of them qualities. You've got to have all three of them. Jimmy figured some of this out early in his career. After being the only guy in one of his bands to have enough credit to get a PA system, Jimmy said he realized early on that you had to have a sense of business to survive in the music business. And survive he did, but sometimes that wasn't very easy. He attended Alabama's Auburn University before graduating from the University of Southern Mississippi. So what was next? He decided to go to New Orleans where him and his guitar could be found out on the streets entertaining the passerbys. It was around this time he took his first trip up to Nashville. He also married his first wife, Margie, in 1969. They divorced in 1971, and later that year, he ended up in Coconut Grove, just south of Miami, staying with his good friend Jerry Jeff Walker. They decided to hop in a 47 Packard and drive down to Key West, and for Jimmy Buffett, there was no turning back. Key West, Florida is where Jimmy started to put it all together, and to be honest, for a time, I don't think he even knew what was happening. He worked on a fishing boat, he played music at night and partied all the time, and started writing songs. These songs were influenced by his life. But strangely, as Jimmy put it, the song that started it all, Margaritaville, was conceived in Austin, Texas. Jimmy was up there to play a gig set up by Jerry Jeff Walker. When on the way to the airport to get back to Key West, he stopped at a little Mexican restaurant to get a bite to eat and a few drinks. While doing this, the idea came to him. By the time he finally made it back to the island, he had a song. Jimmy said once he started to put it down on paper, it all came out basically in 10 minutes. Jimmy had recorded six or seven albums already, and he did have the single Come Monday that did well. But with the song Margaritaville in hand, Jimmy got a hold of producer Norbert Putnam and asked Putnam to work on an album of songs about a carefree lifestyle by the water. Now Norbert told him that he needed to be near the water when recording it if he was to pull it off. So the album, Changes in Latitudes, was recorded at Criteria Studios in Miami with Norbert Putnam in charge. Criteria Studios has a lot of history. Many groups and hit songs have been recorded there. And one that comes to mind is Derek and the Dominoes, Layla, Dwayne Allman on slide guitar. Eagles, Skinner, Grand Funk, Bob Seger, and many more have all recorded there. Norbert and Jimmy, along with that studio, was a good match. The Changes in Latitude album came out sounding great. The song Margaritaville spent 22 weeks on the singles chart, topped out at number eight 
on the Hot 100 in July of 1977. I'm sure this album cost a pretty penny to make. It probably didn't make Jimmy as much money as some would think, but what it did do was get him some recognition, and slowly he was building a following of what was to be known as Parrot Heads. This album and the song Margaritaville was all the business-minded Buffett needed to get the ball rolling. The big labels couldn't categorize Jimmy's music. Margaritaville was on the pop, country, and easy listening charts, but none of them really wanted to take the chance, even though the album did real well. Years later, Jimmy once said, I was never categorized, but now I'm a category. Jimmy himself admits he always wanted to be a good guitar player. He says I was just adequate. He says he even took voice lessons later on in his career. As I quoted Jimmy in the beginning of the video, he said, I had a little bit of talent and a lot of luck. But what he did have was common sense when it came to business. He took a business course in college and knew what supply and demand was. And when his fans escaped the North coming down to Key West to warm up, Jimmy made sure they had what they were looking for. He started his first little t-shirt shack in the Keys and then a restaurant. He said, heck, I didn't serve sushi or things like that. I just gave the people what they wanted, margaritas and cheeseburgers. Jimmy would keep recording and releasing albums and singles, but none of them was the top Margaritaville. And slowly again, Jimmy's career leveled off, but his fan base was still growing. His concerts were one big party. The fans started dressing the part and tailgate parties that turned a two or three hour concert into an all day and night affair. The fans loved Jimmy and everything he represented to them. Jimmy always seemed to have the right people working with him and he'd give them jobs to do and then trust in his judgment of them and stay out of their way and let them do their job. Way too many to name them all here in this short video, but the one who's been with him the longest is his musical director, Michael Utley. Now I'm sure most all of his fans know this name, as he's become well known on the recording of the song Volcano, when Jimmy introduced the solo saying simply, Mr. Utley. Mike Utley has been playing keyboards with Jimmy since 1973 and is the longest running member of the band. He first met Mike in Miami in 1973 and asked him to appear on his second album, A White Sports Coat and a Pink Crustacean. He's appeared on every album since and producing many of them. When Jimmy officially formed his group, named the Coral Reefer Band in 1975, Michael Utley joined and has never left. Following his first divorce in 1971, Jimmy tied the knot with his second wife, Jane Slagsvall, in 1977, after meeting her while she was on spring break down in Key West. They went through some rough times in the 80s, but after about 10 years on and off separations, they got the marriage back on track and have been together ever since. They have three children, two girls, Savannah and Sarah, and one boy, Cameron. 20 years ago this summer, in 2003, the song, It's Five O'Clock Somewhere, was released. The fact that Jimmy was included in the song was kept a surprise until the day it hit the airwaves. Portions of the video for the single were shot in Jupiter, Florida, near one of Alan Jackson's homes. Their duet won Jackson and Buffett Vocal Event of the Year at the CMA Awards and Best Country Song at the Grammy Awards. Jackson included his five o'clock somewhere on the 2010's 34 number ones, as well as on 2012's playlist, the very best of Alan Jackson. Jimmy said this was the first award for him, and in his acceptance speech, he thanked his wife and told Alan Jackson with a grin that he was glad to help him with his struggling career. You know, even for myself, sometimes it's easy to lose sight of Jimmy Buffett, the songwriter, with Jimmy Buffett, the brand, looming so big. When I saw he was now worth a billion dollars, I thought, wow, his business is really thriving. But you know something? None of this would have been possible if it wasn't for his songwriting. And for his music as well, let's just say, Forbes says his assets include an estimated 570 million from touring and recording, along with his $50 million music catalog. 
You might think that the song Margaritaville was the one responsible for all of this, but in reality, it was the song Come Monday that was the stepping stone he needed to get going. He admits the song saved his life in more ways than one. Sitting in a Howard Johnson motel, he was depressed and homesick when he wrote it. It was really his first song that gained him a little bit of money and got him some recognition. As I said, it was a stepping stone to everything Margaritaville would become. Without Come Monday, there might not have been a Margaritaville. Jimmy Buffett has done it all now. A songwriter, performer, an author, a pilot, a sailor, a husband and father, and God and he only knows what else. He's brought happiness to so many people. Even though I wasn't a parrot head, I had to experience a Buffett concert. So I got me a ticket. This was sometime in 1994, 95. And I did it right. Though I didn't dress the part, I did end up with a few beads and a cardboard shark fin hat someone gave me. I got there early for the tailgate party, then the show, and then some after party fun. My whole day and night was a total escape from reality. Once there, all of my life's problems were put on hold. I woke up the next morning with a huge smile on my face. As I said in the beginning, when I started this video, Jimmy was still alive, but now he's gone from this earth. Trying to cover a life like Jimmy Buffett's in a short video like this is like trying to cover an elephant with a washcloth. It isn't happening. Hopefully some of you out there would like to add to this and reflect back on Jimmy's life in the comments sections. Feel free to do so. To Jimmy's family, bandmates, friends, and his fans, I give you my heartfelt condolences. He was one of a kind. And as I think about it, I know now that his legacy will never be forgotten. In closing, I think the last thing he'll be remembered for is being a billionaire. It'll be about the music, and the good times he brought to us all throughout his career with his personality and songs. God bless Jimmy Buffett. Thanks for watching.